I want to spend a few minutes this afternoon talking to you about the word remember. In January, in the Open Door Sunday School class, our teacher, Ann Jessup, asked us to think about one word that um, we wanted to focus on this year in our faith journey. And throughout the course of the year to share with our class what that word means to, to us individually. The word I chose for 2020 was the word remember. And the reason I chose that word is I was thinking about some events that I knew were going to transpire in our own family. And also in the United Methodist Church, there was a lot that would be going on with General Conference. Um, so many emotions with our election coming up. Little did I know that the year would be filled, and it's only the 1st of June, with lots of unexpected events going on, not only in our world, but even more locally here in Columbia. So bear with me as I speak a few minutes about Remember. One of my favorite scriptures having to do with remember is from Hebrews when the list of Old Testament followers were, um, were talked about in Hebrews and how they kept the faith in spite of the circumstances around them. And that to me is something that I find very comforting as we think of the word remember. Perhaps right now we may be thinking about remembering what it was like pre-March 2020 when we could go to the grocery store, go to Walmart, Target, various places, come to church, many places that we could go and freely. And since early March, that of course has changed. That is one way that, <clears throat> excuse me, we have been able to remember the good old days. I recently read Job 29 verses 2 through 6 where Job was reminiscing about the good old days when he was happy and prosperous and as you may recall Job's drama unfolds with the loss of his wealth, family possessions and earthly possessions. His friends come to comfort him although they seem to chastise him for what has befallen Job as their theology, not mine, believes that Job has done something bad and is now being punished for his sins. Job then spends many chapters in conversation with God and God finally speaks. And one of my favorite verses is Job chapter 38 verse four, when God says to Job, where were you when I laid the foundations of the world? Ouch! We don't understand the working of the universe, why many things happen, things that are tragic, that upend us, and right now seem to suspend our everyday lives. But like the end of the book of Job, Job recognizes that when all has been taken away, God is enough. When all else is lost, we still have God. In the past couple of days, we are still reeling from events in Minnesota. The, the tragic events that happened last week, the protests and the riots across the United States, even in our beloved hometown of Columbia, where a peaceful protest turned to violence, when our CDC and soup cellar were even closed on Monday. And so I remember that Jesus calls us to love one another, to reach out to the oppressed and marginalized, to hear the pain of our sisters and brothers, and to respond with love and respect, or as Romans 12, 21 says, to overcome evil with good. Returning to the book of Hebrews, Chapter 11, verse 1, it says, Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance for what we do not see. My Bible translates it as hope and assurance. If we truly stand on the promises of God, 
then we are assured of God's presence and power at work in our world as well as our individual lives. And as our bishop just said in his post, Lord of all, let us remember the many times throughout Scripture and in our world that you remain with us and always at work. Fill us, he said, with your hope for tomorrow.